Hello fellow mathematicians. Today we will be learning about the Laplace transform because it is important in furthering our knowledge of how various transforms work and it will teach us a very intuitive and powerful way to solve differential equations. First, we learn about the science of algebra, which studies unknown variables. We can perform operations on these variables, like multiplying them by a coefficient or bringing them up to a power, among others. Then later, we learn about calculus. And calculus deals with functions, sometimes unknown functions. And we can perform various operations on these functions, like differentiating or integrating. So what if there's a way to go from the domain of calculus to the domain of algebra and back again? For example, if we have a differential equation like g3 dots plus g dot equals 1, and then we have an algebraic equation like x squared plus 2 equals 3, is it possible to go back and forth between these, to transform one into the other? Well, this is the idea of the Laplace transform. You may recall from my Fourier transform video that a transform using integration will get rid of the original domain of a function because the integral is bounded, and then it will introduce a new domain to the function. In this case, we will have our original lowercase f of t function. Then we'll have e to the negative st. Here we're introducing the new variable s. And then we're integrating over t. So what this does is it gets rid of the t because it'll go into the limits of infinity and zero, and we're left with a new function, capital F of s. So now let's do an example of how to solve a differential equation using the Laplace transform. So previously I mentioned this differential equation. So g3 dots, or the third derivative of g with respect to time, plus g dot, the first derivative of g with respect to time, equals 1. So what we're going to do is we'll take the Laplace transform of both sides and we'll break it up into Laplace transform of g3 dots plus the Laplace transform of g dot equals Laplace transform of 1. So let's do each one of these separately. So first we have Laplace transform of g3 dots. So applying the Laplace transform formula, we get that it's the integral from zero to infinity of g3 dots times e to the negative st dt. So here we'll have to perform integration by parts because we have two functions being multiplied together. So we'll say that our u will equal to e to the negative st and our dv will equal to g three dots dt so let's recall how integration by parts works we have integral of u dv equals uv minus integral of v du so this will just be the antiderivative of dv and then this will be du it follows that du will equal to negative s e to the negative st times dt and then integrating g3 dot dt We'll get that v equals g two dots. 
notice that we'll bring down this G with three dots to a G with two dots. This will equal to U V. So G two dots times E to the negative T from zero to infinity minus integral from zero to infinity of V. So G two dots du so negative s e to the negative s t do dt and then to tidy things up we can bring this negative s out let's do integration by parts one more time here again our u will equal to e to the negative s t dv will equal to g two dots dt and so v will equal to g one dot so again, we're bringing this down over and over, and eventually we'll just be integrating g of t times something. Now we'll get g two dots e to the negative s t from zero to infinity plus s times u v. So g dot times e to the negative s t from zero to infinity. And we'll subtract integral from 0 to infinity of v du. So g dot times negative s, again we bring the negative s out, and then we're left with e to the negative s t dt. Okay, we're getting close. One more time. Now, we will need to use the initial conditions. So for this differential equation, the initial conditions are g two dots of zero will equal to zero, g dot of zero will equal to zero, and you guessed it, g of zero equals to zero. But how do we turn this into one of these? Well, we'll just apply the limits. When g dot times e to the negative s t, uh, with t approaching infinity, this becomes negative infinity, so the whole thing is basically zero. And then, when it's zero, this will be e to the zero, so one, times g two dots, of zero. So all in all we get negative g two dots of zero. And then we can rinse and repeat for the rest of these. Now plugging the initial conditions, we get s times s times s times this integral. But this integral is, by definition, the Laplace transform of lowercase g of t. So we'll just put capital G of s. So we're left with s cubed g of s. So now we're going to take the Laplace transform of just g dot. So this will be integral from 0 to infinity of g dot e to the negative st dt. So here we'll only need one integration by parts. Here u will equal e to the negative st as always. And then dv will equal to g dot dt. So v equals g of t. Let's integrate. This will be capital G of S. So we'll get S times capital G of S. And then here, applying the limits, as T approaches infinity, E to the negative ST approaches zero. And then as T 
is 0, then we just get g of 0. So, we get negative g of 0 plus s times capital G of s. And then this equals to 0 according to our initial conditions. So we're left with s times capital G of s. Finally, we'll have to take the Laplace transform of 1. So this will just be integral from 0 to infinity of e to the negative st dt. No integration by parts needed here. It's just e to the negative st over negative s from 0 to infinity. And applying the limits, as t approaches infinity, e to the negative st approaches 0. And as t is 0, then this will just be 1, so it'll be negative 1 over s. 0 minus minus 1 over s is just 1 over s. Okay, so now let's plug this back into our differential equation. So we'll have s cubed times capital G of s plus s times capital G of s equals 1 over s. So here we're going to factor out capital G of S, and here we'll have S cubed plus S equals 1 over S, and then divide both sides by S cubed plus S, to get the capital G of S equals nothing more than 1 over S to the fourth plus S squared. So now we found this transformed function capital G of s. But now we have to inverse Laplace transform it to figure out lowercase g of t. However, it's not that simple because there's no really simple definitive formula for the inverse Laplace transform. So we have to use partial fractions. So we'll have to say that 1 over s squared times s squared plus 1, if you factor this, will equal to a over s squared plus 1 plus b over s plus c over s squared. And now what we're going to do is we are going to multiply both sides by s squared times s squared plus 1. So we'll get 1 equals a s squared plus b s times s squared plus 1 plus c times s squared plus 1. And thus 1 will equal to a s squared plus b s cubed plus b s plus c s squared plus c. So, this is kind of tricky, but I'm going to use um, a way that is employed in a very good Laplace transform video that I will put the link to in the description if you want to learn more about Laplace transform. And this method is taking the coefficients of the quadratic term, the linear term, and the constant term. So let's see, zero, because there are no quadratics here, equals a, plus here, this is a cubic, but we'll just say bs, because that's being multiplied by s squared, plus c equals zero. Then, zero equals b. And then finally, one equals c. Okay. So we'll plug these values of b and c into here to get 0 equals a plus 1. So a equals negative 1. Therefore, our expression now looks like negative 1 over s squared plus 1 plus 1 over s squared. So now, we will have to use lookup tables. 
So here we have a wonderful Laplace transform table, and this is from the KU Open Textbooks, which I will of course link in the description. So here we have the original lowercase f of t function, and then here we have our capital F of s Laplace transform function. So here we have our 1 over s squared term, uh, which is our second term, and we can see that it corresponds to a t. So we know that. The second one is a bit trickier to spot, but if you go down here, you can see omega over s squared plus omega squared. And in this case, the omega can be one, so we get one over s squared plus one, and this correlates to sine of omega t, or sine of one t. And there is a negative sign before this term, so we'll have negative sine of t plus t. Thank you for watching, please apply a force vector to the like and subscribe buttons, and see you next time.